What happens when you leave Play-Doh and hot sauce for a month? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Hot sauce, heck of a kick going in your mouth hole, heck of a kick going out your other hole, mm. and a heck of a bad idea if it's dumped all over your face and body. But we thought, what if you held hot sauce in your mouth for an entire month? Uh, we did not think that, I did not think that. I've never thought that. I don't even know how that would be done, but that is not what we're gonna do. Okay, but we did think about soaking things in hot sauce for a month. And to prove it, let us now head to the spooky shelf that we leave things on, which we call the shelf that we leave things on. Well, looky here, it's Science Mike McCarg, everybody. Welcome back, man. Howdy, friends. You look great. <laughs> A Feeling little, good. A little different. <laughs> a little stiff. No, no you know, there's some motion there. Yeah, you know, we had Mike in for an episode of Leaving Things In before, but, you know, there's been some safety concerns as of late, if you haven't noticed. Uh, but we overcame those. We have overcome the safety concerns, and he is here in the studio with us. Okay, Mike, take it away. They've done Coke, bleach, air, Guinness, salt, pool water, nail polish remover, mouthwash, champagne, shamrock shakes, and Irish whiskey. A 93 Infinity G20 Margaritas Dirt Wine Glow Stick Citric Acid Red Bull Eggs Febreze Coffee and Pumpkin Beer. Yes. But today, they're making things hot. So hot. It's time for Left on a Shelf Hot Sauce Edition. Okay, so we're gonna guess what happened to things left in hot sauce for an entire month, and if we get three or more right, we get a 35 millimeter film single cell from the movie, Some Like It Hot. I hope that's true. Okay, first up, Mike, we have a Pez dispenser that is, uh, oh, it's it's full of Pez, mm -hmm. and it's been soaked so. in hot sauce for, of course, an entire month. And what are the options we have here? After a month, did the Pez inside the dispenser, A, turn mm -hmm. to mush like human civilization as we know it, <laughs> or B, <laughs> remain intact like Mr. Beast on the trending page. Oh, shout out to Mr. Beast. Yeah, I remember that feeling. <laughs> Used to happen so often. Okay, Mike. Wait, wait, uh, you, you enjoyed a Pez lately? Uh, not lately, but uh, that's only because I've been recovering from how many I ate as a kid. Uh, so so it's, a, it's a lifetime of recovery. So hot sauce is mostly water or vinegar. That's their primary ingredient and i don't think the chili pepper and the capsaicin are going to play a major role in anything uh in this reaction pez on the other hand is almost entirely sugar with just a tiny a bit of oil and other preservatives mm. so that makes me think mush is the way to go he's saying mush is the way to go i'm not gonna argue with that or should i <laughs> all right so we're saying a let's see if we were right okay all we see is hot sauce so you're gonna have to open that sucker up and get to the pez get to the inside oh my gosh oh, cool. watch your eyes that's caustic. The oh. uh, the panda itself caustic. has not dissolved. Oh. Oh, that, it's mushy. Yeah. There's. Oh. 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 It's gone. I mean, it's just. There is a goneness. Yeah. It is. I mean, there's nothing that remained intact at all. Sorry, Mr. Beast. We got one right. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I. We should thank Mike. Thank you, Mike. Of course, we left mothballs in hot sauce. <sighs> After a month, did the mothballs lose their pungent odor, which they definitely have? Yeah, get rid of this. It's too pungent. Did they lose their pungent odor like a Michael Bay movie once the credits roll? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes or no? I think that the thing that makes mothballs smell goes all the way to the core. And I think it's so strong that it's overpowering even hot sauce. Okay. So we're agreeing. What's the educated guess here? Uh, I'm inclined to agree, uh, but you know there, there is a caveat here. Uh, mothballs are, uh, the, are the smell. The process of that solid ball turning into a gas creates the vapor. But when mothballs are exposed to water, they break down more quickly. So there's a technicality here that if the mothball is gone, I could see the odor being gone as well. Oh, so so yeah. if there's a mothball left, then I think it would still have that pungent odor. And again, another complicating factor, vinegar is often used in laundry to get rid of mothball smell. And again, 
in a hot sauce, vinegar is one of the primary ingredients. This one is tough. <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to make things more complicated. Man, you made it so complicated. You're supposed to make it simple. What's your answer, man? Yes or no? Well, my hypothesis is the mothball has deteriorated from the water and therefore the odor along with it. All he right. disagrees with us. Are we agreeing with him now? Look at his face. We're his agreeing with him now. Yes. No. It 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 lost his odor. Yes. If it lost the mothball. If uh, there's a mothball in there, I'm immediately wrong. <laughs> okay, I think I still see mothballs, guys. So you think it's still gonna stinky stinky? Oh yeah, oh they're oh yeah, they're like I mean look, it's almost as if nothing happened. Like unaffected. Oh. Wow. Oh, but is it at least soft at all? No, it's not soft. How does that smell? Wow. Oh, they're tough. You can still smell them, but they smell different. Oh. But they smell if they smell like hot sauce and mothballs. They're not toxic anymore because they were in hot sauce, right? Okay, so I'll eat one. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Real quick, we want to let you know that we are premiering a brand new series uh -huh. over on the Mythical Society where we ask Mike some questions that have been burning on our minds, like mm -hmm. why is Link such a picky eater? Or why does Rhett win so much at International Dark? So go over there, sign up for second or third degree at mythicalsociety.com to check that series out. All right, so now uh, we left some good old fashioned Play-Doh in hot sauce for a month. Now I know, well, what are our options first of all? Yeah. After a month in hot sauce, did the Play-Doh A, get bubbly like Jojo Siwa in her new straight to YouTube <laughs> single, Missed My Bedtime, Oops. <laughs> or B, get slimy like my doctor's finger before and after a rectal exam. Oh, come on. Really? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Really? Now, the thing I know about Play-Doh is that it's salty. No, you know, I, I, I'm done with the, I'm done with the eggs. I don't, I don't like, I don't like the eggs. Okay, well, Mike, can I interest you in a hard-boiled egg? Never too early for an egg. Okay, here we go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, wow! That's a fancy iPad. <laughs> so, so I was, I was saying that it's, it's salty, mm. salty plus. Uh, hot sauce, and w would you like a, a strawberry to go with that, Mike? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> okay, here you go. Like just, yeah. just nibble on that strawberry. There mm. you go. Yeah. Wow. Like got right in there. Is this a, is the saltiness a factor, Mike? What do you think? Plato is pretty simple in a way that's maddening for this question. Again, a lot of water, a lot of kind of a starch-based binder. But if you just mix those things together, you get like a really doughy, tacky flour. So you add a lubricant, some kind of oil to make it more tacky, which makes it too slick. So you add a surfacant. So uh, a that surfacant. is a material that counteracts the lubricant surfacant. to make it less slick. Here's the problem with surfacants. They naturally want to form bubbles. So there's two mechanisms of action I was thinking about. One, the starch getting saturated with water here. Uh, which will start to release that lubricant and make it slimy. But there is a chance that the surfacant would bubble. I don't think that is very likely because that tends to be a temporary reaction that would then break apart in the period of a month, which makes me like 60, 65% sure here on the slimy. All right, you know, I was going to say right, slimy fine. anyway. <laughs> you, you let us down last time, but we're going to give you another chance. <laughs> <Mike>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna say get slimy. Okay. Oh yeah, there's no what? bubbles in there. There's no bubbles in sweet. there. Looks uh, like the coloring came loose though. Let's, let's just, I mean, so I just think this out oh, here. Oh, oh yeah. It just became a slime. Yeah, it lost all of its, you know, texture. That is pretty. It's that. Uh, it's the starch. It soaks up all the water. Isn't that? That is kind of pretty. Isn't that like modern? You've done something. Now you put that. You put that in the oven and bake it. Modern art. <laughs> and finally, we left a Brita water filter in hot sauce for a month. And the question is, just this part, just the insert. Will a Brita filter Not left in hot sauce make filtered water stay pure like our undying love for one another? Oh, that's so Ooh. sweet. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. We love you too, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope one day you'll get out of there. Oh. It's, it's nice in here, it's quite comfortable. I mean, there's freaking, 
There's freaking no way. Because it's got to saturate every, I don't know, is this a carbon filter? I don't know what it is. Exactly it's got rocks it in it. So, that, yeah, you're going to have a mechanical filtration. These are increasingly fine filters that grab particulate matter. And then typically an activated carbon is going to be used for uh, gaseous and, and things that improve flavor and clarity and especially odor for water. Ah. And those things, I would imagine, are going to get completely spent uh, in a month in hot sauce, the carbon layer especially. So even if we were to flush this pretty well with water, I think for the rest of its days, uh, this filter will impart just that little uh, spicy kick in every glass of water poured. So we're saying that it did not make it pure. So it's no longer capable of making it pure. Yeah. We're on team um, pure. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, so you that's... just want to give it a wipe down? Oh my gosh, that is, that is a lot of hot sauce. We have this water here. If you want to do, yeah, it's gonna be without getting it all wet. It's just gonna be. There's hot sauce gonna still be on it. I want to get it off of the outside. You get rid of that. I'm excited about. So now imagine water. all the, the the thousands, perhaps millions of tiny holes inside the filter, and how much hot sauce is potentially stored there. The water at my house. It might be nastier than this before we Britaize it. So let's throw it in here. This, that's the point of a filter. Yeah, that's the point. To catch crap and not let it through. I mean, look how much it's changed, the color. It's yeah. so much different than the inside of that thing now. All right, so I'm gonna put that in there. Push it down. There we go. You gotta, you gotta nestle it down in there. It's all the way. All right, all right so now. Pour some water in the top. Moment of truth. Some nice. Crystal clear water. Oh wow! You can see up here that it I immediately mean, like up top. It backwashed some hot sauce. And now we're gonna let this drip all the way through. I'm gonna tell you, it looks pretty clear. <laughs> I have to time lapse this one. Activate time lapse, Mike. Up, oh, you. Put, he brought his hand up to his face. He brought his hand up to he his face his and finger. snapped. Oh look, he's like he's telling me, a, telling you a secret. What? <laughs> hey, Mike, we're gonna turn on time lapse. <laughs> And we're back in normal time. Not a lot uh, has gone through the filter. It though. is going so slowly, <laughs> but because uh, there's there's tainted water up here from the top of the filter. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put the lid on. I want that tainted water. And then so we've got a couple of shot glasses here. This is given the amount of water that we've got coming out. And then um, it looks. It is impressively clear. It is clear. Yeah, it's a little cloudy. I mean, it's not. It doesn't look pure. I think I may have tainted it, Mike. Uh, you want to do the honors? Wish you were here. <laughs> take, take a little slurp. Cheers. Take a little slurp. Yeah. Mm. I wonder how that tastes. What I just tasted. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now. It tastes like a lingering little bit of hot sauce. Yeah, it's still in there. Oh, it's. You know what? I kind of like it. I feel like we could sell it. It's like Burning Man. You could call it Burning Man. Ah, yeah. yes. Have you Burning, Man, Burning water. Man water. It's, it's not spicy though. It took all the spice out, so it's a nice little. It's just a it's tasty a, treat. Yeah, it just has a little bit of savoriness to it. But so that means we mm. got three out of four right, and we win a single cell for film frame from some <laughs> like it hot. Look at that. That's the Our original dream thing is coming true. It's got a certificate of authenticity and everything. It doesn't make me care about it. The least bit more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we also left Link's glasses in hot sauce for a month. Oh, yeah. Just like new. Huh. So that's where those have been. And given my relationship with hot sauce on my face, I'm not putting these on right now. I don't blame you. Thanks again to Mike for joining us today. Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. Now, Mike, you say you know what time it is. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Gareth. And I'm Mark. And we're from Reading, England, and we're about to eat 12 million Scoville hot wings. And now it's time to spin the Wheel of Mythicality. Dang, boys, I mean. <laughs> good luck with that. Too late to turn back now, I guess. Click the top link to see us test hot and cold patches and good mythical more. Yeah, and to find out where the Wheel of Mythicality's gonna land. I actually think picky eating uh, is wonderful. It's a indication of the miracle that is the human sense of taste.